Good evening. Welcome to Prophesy. In today's session, I want to talk to you about prophetic protocol and a few items around the whole idea of prophecy. Why do we prophesy? Why do God need prophets? Um, how do we uh, work with it? And then just give you a few guidelines. I think this is a very important foundational teaching to have in every person's life. Uh, as we grow in God and we become more and more uh, part of churches and ministry teams, we are going to learn how to hear God's voice and start to prophesy. And so the moment you give someone that tool and that power to be able to prophesy, it's also necessary for them to understand a little bit about the prophetic protocol. So my first question I want to answer here is why does God use prophets to speak through? I mean, we already have the Holy Spirit. Why can it not just be the Holy Spirit and the Bible reading? Why do we need prophets? Well, God really desired to walk and talk with us individually, personally, in an intimate relationship. That That is absolutely true. Uh, the issue is many Christians struggle to hear God's voice. Uh, and some do not hear. And even some, when they do hear it, they're confused when they hear it. But you know, God wants us to work together as a body. We are called the body of Christ. We are the church. And so not one person can say, I hear God's voice. I don't need authority in my life. I do not need to be connected to other believers. So you need other people to speak into your life. That's also going to bring accountability. So I want to just say, you are not self-sufficient. And so therefore God has raised up prophetic people. And he's really in this season raising up a prophetic company. And that means all believers that receive the Holy Spirit can be activated to prophesy and to speak the word of God. And, and God has promised to each individual the promise of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so if you go and read there in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verse 6 and 7, it says there, uh, you know, that the gifts of the Spirit is given to all for the profit of all. And so it means all of us can flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and it's really uh, very much not for ourselves but for others so it's a very unselfish gift that God has given us the gifts of the Holy Spirit because you're not going to use it for your own benefit you're going to use it for the benefit of those that are around you and the body of Christ and so um, uh, there is a, a promise of God that he wants to use you in uh, the, the prophetic now uh, when God established the church he didn't establish the church and say, well, I'm going to write the Bible and now we don't need people to see visions or have dreams or prophesy. Uh, he actually said, in the last days, when I established my church, one of the key features of the church is the fact that people will prophesy. And so in Acts chapter 2 verse 17, it says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. You know, that's the last days when God pours out his Holy Spirit. That's obviously happened in Acts and it's still happening today. And so, and, th and then comes the promise. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And so God has given us as the church a, a promise. And he says, when I give you the Holy Spirit, then you will prophesy. You will see dreams and visions. And so uh, a, a very central part of us being the church is the fact that we will hear God's voice, that we will prophesy, that means we declare what God is saying, and also that we will see dreams and visions. I think that is quite amazing that God actually, before even a church was established, he says, well, here's two key things that you'll know that the church is being established. Number one, that his spirit is being poured out and the fact that the people start to prophesy. It's quite amazing. So it's, it's hard to believe that some people could even come up with the idea that says, well, we don't have prophets anymore and there's no people prophesying. Because that's, that's simply just not true uh, in scripture. God actually wants us to prophesy. Now, at the establishment of the church, the Lord put very specific provisions in place. Uh, and then the very first thing is he gave us the Holy Spirit and he gave it on a day of Pentecost. Uh, the, the Pente means five or 50 and cost is a feast. So it's a feast of 50. Uh, the, the Hebrew was Shavuot, uh, which was uh, Shavuot in essence means a seven uh, a weeks of seven. Uh, which is 49 plus 1, so it's the 50th one. It was also the same uh, time when God made a covenant with the people of Moses, if you count the days from the day uh, when they put the blood uh, on the door frames. If you add up 
uh, the 50 days and that's that day when the Lord gave them uh, the new covenant or the covenant with the Israelites. Um, and so uh, it, it's quite amazing now God writes his laws on our hearts. He's given us the, the Holy Spirit. And that was a very important provision. You must remember uh, uh, 50 or 5 uh, in a Hebrew always means provision uh, that God has given or provision that is opening up. And so the Lord gave us the best possible provision that we could have as the church. And that is the Holy Spirit. Uh, the next thing uh, that ha happened, God formed uh, the church or the body of Christ. Um, and it's quite amazing because before then, the people of God was always like one race, one group of people, just like the Israelites or the people, you know, the children of Abraham is just one group of people. But now the church includes all cultures, ethnic groups, nations. Uh, any person can be part of the body of Christ. You just have to accept Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart uh, that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess Jesus. And so... Um, so the first thing is the Holy Spirit. The second one is God established the church. The uh, next one, God raised up men and women. Uh, and that already happened in the Old Testament. But over many, many years, uh, God raised up these uh, men uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit to write scripture. And to write all these letters and these books uh, and these testimonies, which we call today the Bible. And so, I mean, over many years, the canon of the Bible was established. There's still some people today that's arguing, you know, is this Bible that we use today, uh, the full uh, Bible, should we add stuff, should we subtract stuff? There's always a debate going on. But God, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, brought us the Bible. And so that was also a very important thing that needed to be established. Now, I just want to say this. Uh, the Bible is written by men that were... Uh, influenced by the Holy Spirit and inspired by the Holy Spirit. Some of what's written in the Bible is also influenced by those people's own perceptions and thoughts. And so therefore, when we read the Bible, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit will use those scriptures in the Bible and He will illuminate it to us, give us revelation, and He will speak to us through the scriptures that we read. Um, when the script, when the the, the scripture, especially like in uh, John chapter 1, says in the beginning was the word. Uh, that doesn't talk about the Bible. Jesus is not the Bible. The Bible is not God. Uh, when it says in the beginning was the word, the word, and that word logos, uh, refers to Jesus. He is the word. And so the word has made, been made manifest. And so uh, the Bible is simply uh, a guide to to the word. Some of the others, you read the scripture, and the Holy Spirit illuminates it, uh, and then a gate opens up for God to speak to you through the Bible. So I, I don't really like it to say that the Bible is the word of God, uh, but the Bible is certainly inspired by God. And God wants to speak to us. He wants to speak to us through the scriptures. Um, we can learn and, and educate us. Um, so um, yeah, that's that's a much that I want to say about the Bible. And I just make this final comment, and this is something that Bill Hammond said. He says, prophecy is the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that's a very nice way for me to say it. It's not a scripture that says it. That's uh, Bill Hammond that said that. All right, so now God wants to reveal, and uh, God wants the revelation of his will to be vocalized. That's very important. When God brings revelation, he doesn't just want someone to understand it in their head or receive it in their heart. Someone needs to actually rise up and speak out the revelation that God is bringing. And so prophets has a responsibility to reveal the mind of Christ for individuals and groups, but really to speak it out. And so when we prophesy, we kind of divide prophetic ministry into two groups. You've got corporate prophecy and then you've got individual or personal prophecy. And so the corporate prophecy uh, is a prophetic word that's maybe to a church or a city or a nation or an ethnic group to a, to a group of people or even a business. That's a corporate uh, prophetic word. It's to an entity uh, that, that maybe encompass a lot of people. Now, personal prophecy is to a specific individual when the Lord uses a prophetic person to speak to them and to prophesy to them uh, the word of the Lord. So let's say, for instance, in the scripture, uh, we can clearly see that God wants 
every we, God wants us to, to marry. You know, He wants us to marry, to multiply, to fill the earth. So uh, it is biblical and it's godly for us to get married to a woman. But now uh, the question is, which woman uh, should I get married to? And so when I meet uh, the one, uh, then the Holy Spirit could possibly speak in my heart and say, well, this is the one. Or I can just in a very natural way just fall in love with her and just want to be with her. Um, and by now I'm unsure, is this the one? Is God happy with us or not? And so a lot of times the Lord can use then a prophetic person to come in a situation and to just affirm uh, what you maybe already feel or what you're unsure about. Or maybe let's say there's a, a business opportunity or a, a work opportunity that come your way uh, and uh, a prophetic person come and say, well, this is what the Lord says. The Lord is going to give you an a, a, a opportunity uh, for work and this is what it's going to be about. So when that opportunity then come up, then immediately you already have the confirmation through the the prophetic word and obviously the Holy Spirit uh, that speaks in you and then you know this is the way I should go or could be opposite to say well this door that's going to open up it's not from the Lord uh, don't do it uh, and then you can listen to that voice and then obviously your your uh, you also listen to the Holy Spirit to have that witness to know which is the right decision so personal prophecy as uh, is is always um, subject to the principles in the scripture and in the Bible uh, but it is for the individual to help them with individual decisions that they're going through. Now, the, the prophetic ministry is for illumination and not for addition. So when we use the word revelation uh, in an individ in individual point of view, then you might read a scripture or you might listen to a sermon or you might pray and the Lord will start speak to you. Uh, and then you'll receive a revelation about what God is saying. So that means that's truth that was already maybe written or it was known for a long time, but you didn't know about it and God illuminated it and it become for you a revelation. Now, usually the very first time when a new piece of information comes from heaven to earth, it's called revelation. Uh, it might not be a revelation for everybody, but it is a revelation for that person that, that heard it. And that person can then speak it out or publish it in some way or, or another. And then others, as they read that, the Holy Spirit will illuminate it and then it will become for those individuals also a revelation. So now that's kind of the idea of a revelation. A lot of scriptures uh, was given by revelation. Now, uh, today, when prophets speak, they're supposed to reveal the truth that God has already spoken. Um, and so we're not supposed to add to the Bible, uh, although uh, very specific things uh, uh, will uh, be confirmed uh, through scriptures uh, when a prophet speaks to an individual. But we're not supposed to uh, have extra biblical writings that's in addition to the Bible uh, and then you start to use that also as a measuring stick. The, the, the scripture and the Bible will always remain our measuring stick. So in 2 Timothy chapter 4 16 it's a very good verse it says here all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So that's something that we just have to accept and to believe that God has inspired Paul and Peter and Luke, you know, um, uh, just for interest sake, the person that wrote the most in the New Testament was actually Luke. If you just add up all the words in the scriptures and the letters, you'll see he actually wrote the most with the book of Luke and Acts. The person that wrote second most then was uh, um, Paul. And uh, then we also have James and uh, Peter, John uh, write also quite a, a lot in the scriptures. And then obviously you have all these Old Testament guys. And I think the one probably write the most is Moses. Um, but um, all that scripture is given by inspiration of God. And there's also um, uh, a way of reading the scripture uh, so that you have a balance in your life. Um, there's also scripture that I can say I have a higher authority than other scripture. Not meaning if Paul says something, this is a level of, uh, of authority to it. But if Jesus in his gospel says something, it's usually a lot higher authority than when Paul said it. Uh, also, when you read something maybe uh, in, the, in the law, in the first five books of the Bible, it will usually have a lot higher authority maybe than if you read uh, one of the verses in the prophetic books. So uh, uh, there is a way how you read the scriptures and you can interpret it. There's also uh, the law first mentioned. So in the first time when you read about a concept or idea in Genesis, that kind of sets a principle for the rest of the Bible. So it's a very specific way how we read the Bible. But it says here, 
2 Timothy 4.16 All scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And so um, we always use the Bible as a plumb line and as a foundation on which we can then uh, judge prophetic ministry. So some, let's say someone prophesied to you uh, and that prophecy is um, in line with what scripture says. Uh, then at least there's one check mark to say, well, at least this prophecy is in line with what the scripture says. So in your process of judgment, that could be a, a place where you start to say, well, is this prophecy in line or against what scripture says? If it's in line, that's a first check mark. But that doesn't mean that's the only way to judge it. Uh, but that would be uh, the first level of judging a prophetic word. All right. Now, prophetic ministry will bring confirmation and will, it will be a, a witness. Some prophetic word, word will be the first witness and then you're going to have to get two more witnesses. Uh, a lot of times what happens is you'll get a witness out of scripture, you get a witness of the Holy Spirit inside of you speaking and you'll get a witness from a prophet that speak into your life. There could also be uh, in creation or in circumstances something that happens that also then become a witness uh, to what the prophet has spoken, what was revealed to you out of the scripture or what the Holy Spirit has spoken to you. Uh, but usually you need at least two or three witnesses uh, so in second corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 it says by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word shall be established and so it's very important that there's always two or three witnesses in 1 corinthians chapter 14 verse 29 it says let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge it's important that scripture because it says there that there needs to be uh, three witnesses that speak and so a lot of times you could receive from a prophet a prophetic word then maybe later the one didn't even know about the other one would come and speak to you and give you the same word and then maybe later on another third person come and speak to you again a prophetic word and it's the same thing as the the first and the second so now you got three witnesses and now uh, that can be established you can also get then maybe a witness from um uh, the uh, the Holy Spirit inside of you. You can get your mother and your father or some kind of spiritual leader in your life to listen to those words and also judge it. If as uh, you know, and ask the question: Is this from God? Um, usually, when we judge the word, we we want to ask: Is this a, a true word from God? Yes or no? And then we want to ask: I go well. Uh, what is the timing? Is it for now or is it in the future? When when do we think is it? Maybe we don't have the answer for the timing. And then we also ask the question, well, what is my response? Uh, how should I act? What's the instruction that comes with this word? And so sometimes it can be wait and trust on me. Maybe it could be I want you to go and speak to this person, call that person, do this thing, go there. Maybe it could even be give a gift or a, a offering. Maybe the Lord is calling on you to fast and pray. It, there's always a, a reaction that we have have to give and we got to ask ourselves the questions i've got to receive this word uh, we confirm this is a word from god now what do i do so uh i just want to say more, one more thing about the protocol a lot of times when we get people to help us to judge make sure that that person that they help you to judge the word loves you it's very important that they love you and that you feel loved by them because remember the the judgment of God, uh, the righteousness of God uh, always comes through a heart full of love because a heart full of love connects with God, connects with the Holy Spirit. So if the person, if it doesn't feel like the person loves you and is a very academical person, I would not really trust their judgment. But if it feels like they really love God and they really love you uh, and they love the word of God, uh, then they probably qualify more to be a person to uh, help you to judge the word. So usually I would get a friend that loves me or my mom and dad or maybe um, a minister and we would sit together, we would listen to the word or, or read it out and then we would discuss it and then pray about it and ask the Lord what does he say about it and then uh, the Lord will give his instructions. Many times in a prophetic word you could have a long word and there could be maybe eight points in the words and seven of those points are bang on and then the, the eighth word you could be unsure uh, about and then you can put that on the shelf and just say well let's just wait because i'm not sure about that uh, because the other sevens were were accurate uh, i don't want to just dis disregard the eighth one but i was not sure about it so i'll just kind of put it on the shelf and kind of put it on pause a little bit you know uh, a lot of times uh, bill hammond said to us it's almost like looking at a traffic light you'll see the red 
uh, light that means stop or don't do it uh, and then you got the the yellow light uh, which could say well just slow down or maybe it's not the right time right now uh, uh, it's not a solid green yet and then obviously when you get the green then it's like go uh, and then you can specifically ask the lord what is his instructions okay i'm going to finish with and i want to go on to late uh, with the session um, but in 1 corinthians chapter 14 verse 39 we read a desire earnestly to prophesy so that's very important prophecy is important that's part of the church it's part of the signs of us as the church is the holy spirit and his prophecy um and so we should prophesy and we should not uh, stop to pray in tongues and then it continues here in verse 40 it says let all things be done decently and in order so it's important that prophecy has to be, has to be done that you must create space in meetings and church services for the prophets to speak but here's the thing it has to be done decently and in order now uh, churches respond differently to that some would say well decently in order for us just means no prophecy uh, but that's not what the scripture says because the scripture says let all things be done so you cannot say well i'm going to mute uh, the voice of the Holy spirit i'm going to mute the prophets you got to create a platform for them to speak but you just have to make sure that there's the, the right protocols in place so it can be done decently and in order in 1 corinthians chapter 14 verse 3 we see this very important verse it says here he who prophesies speaks edification exhortation and comfort to men and so what happens when uh, the prophets speak the word will speak to the the potential that's in someone's life it will speak according to the blueprint and the purpose the plan the dream that god has and it will build that person up it will exhort them it will comfort them you know the holy spirit is the comforter and that comfort paracletos literally means to walk parallel to give direction and so the prophetic word will give you direction and the comfort that we need in many times is to know which direction uh, we should go so that we can have hope so we can put our faith into that hope so that we can take firm actions of faith now um it doesn't say here that the, the prophecy will judge and now you ask the question so does prophets don't speak any words of judgment anymore and i want to say that there is prophets that speaks words of judgment but the end result of it has to be edification exhortation or, or comfort um uh, the, the the judgment that god speaks uh, through uh, prophets um has to be uh, very thoroughly weighed because you know we are in a time of grace grace means that god loves us and that he expresses his love and his favor to us and so therefore um i don't really allow any of the prophetic team uh, especially in our church to speak any words of judgment um uh, you also see when you read in uh, 1 corinthians chapter 14 it talks a lot about when someone praying tongues that then that tongues has to be interpreted so if you pray tongues in front of a big group of people then you need to have it interpreted and it actually says let two or three pray in tongues but then let someone interpret if there's not an interpreter he's also not uh, praying tongues i think 1 corinthians chapter 14 2 talks about when we pray in tongues we speak mysteries and so a mystery simply means something that is hidden and so what we learn from it is when something that's hidden is spoken uh, then that needs to be interpreted and so a lot of times when we prophesy we can speak in images and pictures and we can say well this is the vision that i saw but then there also needs to be the interpretation so i found if someone would prophesy a word but there doesn't come an interpretation then the word doesn't edify exhort and comfort that actually brings confusion into someone's lives and so i want to encourage you whenever you want to prophesy to someone and you have the picture but you don't have the interpretation then maybe you should get with one or two friends first pray about it get the, the interpretation so that when you bring the word that you can bring them the word with the interpretation so that they can be edified exhorted and comforted and so that's very important for me uh, and i also thought with our teams that we minister on friday nights and on monday nights i'm actually going to pull us together a little bit more and say we need to make sure that we always give the interpretation because when you prophesy but you don't uh, give the interpretation it can bring a lot of confusion especially for someone that's immature uh, and they are hungry to receive the word but they do not have the ability to interpret what god is saying yeah, that's 
that's my session on prophetic protocol and and i believe uh, this is good information i want to encourage you i went quite fast through it please go and listen to this again make notes uh, and study these things because uh, prophecy is central of what we have to do as believers and ministers and we need to understand the prophetic protocol very well God bless you. Have a fabulous evening. I bless you. I declare that you're going to have the joy of the Lord in your life, that you're going to walk in financial blessing, that you're going to be healthy, that you're going to have the wisdom of God, and that the Lord will just give you a mantle of favor. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Have a fabulous evening. <music>